Let's take a look at a couple of consequences of the division algorithm. So let's say we've got a field. We've got some element of that field, and we've got some polynomial in the polynomial ring with coefficients from that field. Then what I'm going to claim is that if I evaluate that polynomial at A, I get the remainder that I would get when I divide the polynomial by x minus a. If you remember, this is exactly the way it works for real valued polynomials. So why does this work? Well, it's really just a direct consequence of the division algorithm. If I say that x minus a is my g of x in the division algorithm, then f of x has to equal q of x times g of x plus r of x. If I take that and if I evaluate both sides but at a, I get f of a is equal to q of a times a minus a plus r of a. But then of course a minus a gives us the zero element, and the zero element times anything is the zero element. Add it to that, so f of a has to be the same as r of a. Now, in general, r of x is a polynomial, and this would just give you a that when I evaluate that polynomial, I get the same thing as when I evaluate f of a. But also remember that in the division algorithm, the degree of the remainder has to be less than the degree of g. And g is a first degree polynomial. So that means that r is just a constant, is just a field element. So there we go. We got a field element out of f of a. It has to equal the field element that is r. r and there we have it. Now this is sort of a corollary to the corollary. I'm not going to go through and prove it, but the whole idea is then that when you're doing this, if you get zero when you evaluate this thing f of x at a, that must mean that x minus a is a, a factor. It must divide in evenly. Like I said, I'm not going to prove that, but Saying that it's a factor is basically the same thing as saying that the remainder is zero, so there you have it. Let's look at one more consequence of that division algorithm. A polynomial with degree n over a field has at most n zeros, counting multiplicity. I'm not going to do a really formal proof, but let me just kind of outline it a little bit. So let's say you've got a polynomial f of x, and that's degree n. And let's say that a is a 0. By the previous corollary, we know that x minus a is a factor. So that means that by the division algorithm, f of x is equal to x minus a times some q of x plus the remainder, but we know that the remainder is 0. Thinking about this q of x, What does the degree of that have to be? Well, if f of x is an n-degree polynomial, based on the way polynomial multiplication works, this thing has to have degree n minus 1. Again, this is the reason I'm not going to do it very formally, but basically what that means is we could do an inductive argument. If this has at most n minus 1 zeros, we get another 0 there, f of x has n zeros. 
So just a simple little inductive argument says that f of x, a degree n polynomial, has at most n zeros. However, it's important to realize, and honestly all these things with division algorithm stuff has to be over a field, but it's very easy to see here why. Let's take a look at the polynomial x squared plus 7 and let's look at that where in z8x. Obviously, however, z8 is not a field. Now there's only a limited number of things here. Certainly f of, if I call this f of x, f of 0 is 7, f of 1 is 1 plus 7 is 0 in z8, f of 2, 4 plus 7 is 3 in z8, f of 3, 9 plus 7 is 16 is 0 in z8, f of 4 uh, is 7, f of 5, 25 plus 7 gives us 0, f of 6, uh, 36 plus 7, 43 is 3, and f of 7 is once again 0. So because this isn't a field, I actually can have more than n zeros. I have four zeros even though it's only a second degree polynomial.